All right, hey, Honors Chemistry. I wanted to go through our next worksheet in this unit, which is worksheet one, where we begin to use relative masses of elements to figure out what we're gonna call the molar masses of elements or the atomic masses. So from the PowerPoint and from a previous discussion, we were discussing some things, or you may need to look back at our PowerPoint to write some notes down. Um, we've established that combining ratio of gases can be explained if two assumptions are made. One, equal volumes of gases contain the same number of molecules at the same pressure and temperature. And this was Avogadro's hypothesis. And some pure elemental gases are clustered into pairs to form diatomic molecules. And so we did this in a previous unit, but things like H2O2N2F2I2Br2, all of these are diatomic elements. They're kind of clustered together. Okay, we're going to remember that for our little example here. Okay, so use these assumptions and particle diagrams to explain the fact that the density of oxygen gas at STP, so same temperature, same pressure, at STP, standard temperature and pressure, is 1.43 grams per liter. Okay, whereas the density of hydrogen is... 0 0.089 grams per liter. So we're going to label one of these. I'm going to label this as hydrogen. And I'm going to label this as oxygen. And we're going to assume that this is our same P. So same P, T, and V, right? Same pressure, temperature, and volume. Because if we have the same pressure, temperature, and volume, I'll have the same number of particles in here. So these two boxes look like they have the same volume, so I'm gonna have the same number of particles of hydrogen and oxygen. For our example, we'll just use one. Well, hydrogen in this one liter, let's say this is one liter, right? Hydrogen is 0 0.089 grams for every one liter. Okay, oxygen is 1.43 grams for every one liter, right? So in one liter, I should have, I will have 0 0.089 grams of hydrogen. And you know that if we get a certain volume and we get the mass of that volume, we can get the density. So density is something that we can measure. So I have hydrogen's density is 0 0.089 grams per liter. Oxygen's density is 1.43 grams per liter. Well, if these are both a liter, how much more massive is oxygen than hydrogen? That's our question here. How many times more massive is one molecule, molecule of oxygen than one molecule of hydrogen? Well, that means I want oxygen divided by hydrogen. And this is us doing our relative mass here, right? Relative mass is I want oxygen, which looks like it's heavier, divided by hydrogen, all right? I always, in the case of relative mass, I always wanna compare it to the smallest mass. So right here between 0 0.089 and 1.43, 0 0.089 is the smallest and it's gonna go in the bottom. So 1.43 grams of oxygen, <laughs> over 0 0.089 grams of hydrogen. This is gonna tell me how much larger oxygen is than hydrogen. If I do this division, I will get about 16, all right? 16 times larger. So this means oxygen is 16 times larger than hydrogen using their densities. So how might I wanna draw that in these boxes? Well, let's say I'll draw hydrogen, and don't forget it's a diatomic here. We studied this in a previous chapter, but hydrogen's diatomic, 
It's been experimentally determined. So, I'm going to draw my hydrogens like this. If I want to draw my oxygens and showing that they are more massive, 16 times more massive, I got to draw oxygens 16 times more massive. Oh, just pretend like it's 16 times. Oh. All right, so this is 16 times more massive. So if I had one gram of hydrogen, let's say I had one gram of hydrogen, I would have 16 grams of oxygen, right? That's how much more massive a hydrogen is, one hydrogen is to oxygen, 16 times, okay? Now, you sh um, scrolling down a little bit, you shouldn't conclude that chemists were able to determine the molar masses of all elements using this technique. Measurements of the density of the gaseous phase of many of the elements are difficult. For example, if I want to try and get the gaseous phase of sodium metal, that's going to be crazy ridiculous. It requires a lot of energy, and it's actually quite dangerous. So it's really difficult to do the density of these gases. Measurements of the density of the gaseous phase of many of the elements are difficult, if not impossible. However, we are going to see that chemists could use another tool, the percent composition of compounds, to determine the molar masses. Okay? Now remember, and this was from a previous unit, and it's in our PowerPoint, and we did um, a calculation or so with this, but I could use, I'm just going to ignore this little part here, I could use, let's say I had compound A, and compound B. I could use the masses of those compounds, right? So let's say for compound A, I had 42.9 grams of carbon, 57.1 grams of oxygen. In compound B, let's say I had 27.3 grams of carbon and 72.7 grams of oxygen. I'm just making this up and this kind of goes back to unit four. If I want to divide by the smallest mass, right? If compound A has 42.9 grams of carbon and 57.1 grams of oxygen, let me do 57.1 grams of oxygen divided by 42.9 grams of carbon. If I divide that, I'll get 1.330 for 1H. That's how large it is in this compound. If I do compound B, I'll do 72.7 grams O over 27.3 grams C, and that equals 2.660 O for H. All right, so if I want to compare these two, all right, and this is what we did in a previous unit, if I just get the ratio of these masses, how much more oxygen is in compound B then compound A. Well, my top number corresponds to oxygen. That means I have twice as, I must have twice as much oxygen in this compound than I do in this compound. Oh, I'm sorry, this is carbon. Oops. You must be thinking I'm crazy. I put hydrogen here, right? So I must have twice as much oxygen in this compound than I do this compound. So if I have a C atom and I have twice as much oxygen in B than A, I could draw one oxygen here, and I could draw two oxygens there. And I talk about this and cover this in the PowerPoint. I just wanted to show this as an example of, remember when we did something like this? Remember when we used masses to compare how many atoms are in a compound? Now we're going to try and compare atoms' masses to see what the mass of one atom is. Right, so this is just a bit of a recap for this, that we did do something like this before, where we compared masses to see how many more atoms are in a compound. We're not gonna do calculations like this in this unit, but remember this calculation. So now let's go to the back, and it says, in like manner, the masses of the elements in various oxides, meaning they've been combined with oxygen, were calculated and shown in the table. I'm going to say this is the first column, second, third, and fourth column, because um, the later questions down here ask you to talk about these columns. In my first column, I have the different elements. In the second column, I have how much of those grams combined with 100 grams of oxygen. 
You have to remember something. Just remember something little here. That Dalton said... Dalton said... They all combined in a one-to-one -one ratio. Also, we're making the assumption that we have all the same number of particles. Kind of like in our relative mass activity with the bolts and the hex nuts and the washers, that that vial had 25 pieces. We're saying that if I have a vial of this, I have the same number of pieces, okay? But their masses are different, okay? So, looking at question one before we do any calculations here, it says Dalton assumed these elements combine in a one-to-one -one ratio, right? I said that. So the values in the second column could be used to compare the masses of these elements. This is, if this is a one-to-one -one ratio, Hydrogen combining with oxygen, I'm saying I have HO, and I use 12.5 grams of that H to combine with 100 grams of O. For the next one, I have CO, NO, OO, FEO, HGO, AGO. I'm using Dalton's assumption that all of these have oxygen, and the only thing that's different about them is the other element in it. Okay, so this has hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and this is how much of that combined with oxygen. So, for example, in this first one, I use 12.5 grams of hydrogen to combine with 100 grams of oxygen. For the second one, I have 75 grams of carbon to combine with 100 grams of oxygen. They all combine with the same amount of oxygen. So now I can compare how much more massive one is to the other. And I always divide by the smallest. And in this set here, my smallest is my 12.5. So going back to my question here, as you did in the relative mass lab, divide these values by the mass of hydrogen, which is that 12.5, to obtain relative masses of the elements. Record these values in the third column. These are the values Dalton reported for the relative masses of these elements. So. In the first column, it divided 12.5 by 12.5. In all of these, I want to divide this mass given by 12.5 to see how much larger these are than hydrogen. If I do 75 divided by 12, I'm taking this number and dividing it by 12.5. I'm taking this number, dividing it by 12.5. If I do that math here, I'm going to get 6. That's my relative mass for carbon. If I do this next one, which is 87.5 divided by 12.5, I get 7, which is my relative mass for nitrogen. If I do the next one, which is 100 divided by 12.5, I get a relative mass of 8 for oxygen, 8 grams or 8, okay? If I do iron, I'll do 349 divided by 12.5, and I get a relative mass of 27.92. Mercury, I'll do 1250 divided by 12.5, and I get a relative mass of 100. For silver, I'll do 1349 divided by 12.5, and I'll get a relative mass of 107.92. So that's what it wants you to do for the third column. Number two then says, compare the value for the mass of oxygen you obtained this way. So my mass of oxygen is eight compared with this way. These are all in grams, just so you know. All right, so my relative mass of oxygen is eight grams. With the value that you calculated earlier, so earlier we said that if I had one gram of hydrogen, I'd have 16 grams of oxygen. That's what we calculated earlier, so I'm gonna write that down. Earlier, if I had one gram of hydrogen, that was equal to 16 grams of oxygen because oxygen is, or was, 16 times greater than hydrogen. That was earlier. Sketch particle diagrams for both Dalton's and our current model of water. Okay, oops, you can't even see what I wrote, I'm sorry. 
right? So earlier we got that one gram of hydrogen corresponded to 16 grams of oxygen. That's when we drew our particle diagram and we compared the densities. And I saw that oxygen was 16 times larger than hydrogen. And if you forgot this, um, go back in the video and see that. Um, if I want to do Dalton's, Dalton says that one gram of hydrogen is actually eight grams of oxygen. It's only eight times as large. And then if I want to do our modern water, we know that water, we know that water is H2O. So that's one oxygen, two hydrogens. For Dalton, he said everything combined in a one-to-one -one ratio. So Dalton said hydrogen and oxygen would combine and look like this. Okay. Well, what's the issue here? It looks like we only have half our water here. It looks like Dalton has half of what we ex we get with density, right? If I were to try and look at this mass here, this mass would be... 18 technically because each hydrogen is one and then this oxygen is 16 if I were to do this mass this would be eight and one this would be nine our mass our modern mass of water would be 18 grams our mass of water according to Dalton would be nine grams it looks like he's half is off since the mass Dalton obtained for oxygen was half of the accepted value, adjust the values you obtained for the other elements and record them in the fourth column. How do these values compare to the molar masses in the periodic table? So let's see what happens. So let's adjust these masses. We have, if since Dalton's is half as much, to adjust, we have to multiply by two. So for carbon, if I multiply by 2, I get 12. We're not going to multiply hydrogen. We're just adjusting everything else. For nitrogen, if I multiply by 2, I get 14 grams. For oxygen, I'll get that 16 grams if I multiply by 2. So now I'm good. I'm all squared up with oxygen. For iron, if I multiply by 2, I'll get 55.84 grams. For mercury, I'll get 200 grams. And for silver, I'll get 215.84 grams. Okay? On your own, so here's our table now. On your own, I would like you to try and answer and complete question three then. Question three says, how do these values compare to the molar masses of the periodic table? Are there any other elements that do not combine in a one-to-one -one ratio? Explain. So what you're going to do is look at these new adjusted masses. Do these masses match the ones that we found on the periodic table? If yes, put a star next to them. If no, are there any other elements that do not combine in a one-to-one -one ratio? Explain. Because remember, we're making the assumption that all these combine in a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, so I'm hoping this video helps set you up for worksheet number five. Make sure that you have worksheet number five completed. You will need to ha have answered question number three on your own and have this stapled or taped into your notebook to be checked.